Chapter 5 Life Hacks Look at their actions when dealing with those who irritate, annoy, and bother you. Avoid being insulted. Give them some leeway. Don't spread rumors about them. Additionally, you must reject their game. Some people enjoy debating and arguing. To catch your attention, they create conflict. People are merely attempting to hook you when they use conflict to grab your attention. What you believe is not important to them. They simply want to draw you into their game. On the internet, you frequently encounter this. When someone says something absurd, you immediately respond, I'm going to correct him. Got him. The other person is saying at that very moment, I've just caught a massive one. Your entire body is itching to respond to that blog post, email, or Facebook update. Never do it. It's a snare. If you wrestle in the mud with a pig, both of you will become dirty, but only one of you will enjoy it. According to a saying once heard, keep away from the muck. Avoid getting drawn into the debate. Simply pass by. According to Proverbs 26.21, a quarrelsome person keeps an argument continuing just as charcoal and wood keep a fire going. Some people enjoy continuing the debate. By upsetting you, they find their meaning, their purpose, and their value. Play not their game. Avoid being sucked into it. They are not seeking solutions. They only wish to engage in a debate. How many persons are needed to have a disagreement? Two are required, right? What would happen if one of them left the argument? It comes to an end. The fire extinguishes. The most forgiving action you can take on occasion is to leave the dispute. It's crucial to comprehend what the Bible says regarding three contentious matters as you seek Scripture for God's truth. I bring up these three because it takes the most guts to speak out against them. Why? Because there are a lot of individuals who will disagree with you and feel strongly about their position. It takes extraordinary bravery to resist that level of pressure. Every unborn kid has a purpose in God's plan. Before you were born, God had a plan for your life. You saw me before I was born. In your book, every day of my life was chronicled. Before a single day had passed, every moment was planned. Psalm 139, verse 16. We are expected to speak up for those who are unable to do so, such as the 70 million Americans who would not have been aborted but are still alive today. Every life must be sacrosanct if I are to identify as a Christian. Sex is only for married people. God created sex. Sex is holy. It is not improper or impure. Marriage should be respected by everybody, and the marriage bed should be kept from immoral behavior, for God will judge the adulterer and all homosexuals. Hebrews 13.4 NIV God's directives remain constant. Premarital sex is forbidden by God. For God, cohabitation without marriage is unacceptable. God does not accept adultery. God disapproves of pornography and the objectification of women. For all time, one guy and one lady. That is the original, planned design of God. What about all the polygamy in the Bible, many people wonder? Not all of what the Bible says is in agreement with it. What makes it a holy Bible, then? Because it is truthful and makes the marital issue extremely clear. A man will leave his father and mother and be wedded to his wife, and the two will become one flesh, because the Creator made them male and female in the beginning. They are now one flesh instead of two. Therefore, let nothing be divided that God has joined together. Matthew chapter 9, verses 4-6 through six. The aim of Jesus Christ is a connection with you. He won't ever abandon you, deceive you, disregard you, forget about you, or change your appointment in His calendar. He can pick you up if you fall. He can pardon you when you make mistakes. He is powerful when you are powerless. He is the way if you're lost. He is courage when you're terrified. 
He can support you if you fall. He can make you whole when you are wounded. He is able to mend you when you are broken. He can guide you even though you are blind. He is able to feed you when you are hungry. He can be there for you through hardships. He can make you stronger while you are persecuted. He can provide you comfort when you are having issues. He can take care of you when you experience loss. Everywhere, at all times, in every fashion, He is everything for everyone. Turn your complete attention away from committing evil. Ask to be filled with and disciplined by the Spirit of God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. No matter what others say or do, study, apply, and follow the Word of God in prayer. You can find direction, serenity, joy, and healing through the Word of God. You can develop a proper relationship with our Creator through the Word of God. You can only understand God's Son, Jesus Christ, who died to atone for all humanity's sins through the Word of God. The earth, the sun, the stars, and the universe were all formed by the Word of God. We will be assessed according to the Word of God for our deeds. The planet will eventually disappear but the Word of God endures forever. It would be unwise to ignore and disregard this resource's advantages, wisdom, and knowledge. 2 Timothy 3.16 We have received this treasure from our Heavenly Father so that we may prosper not only in this life, but also in the hereafter. Worldly knowledge and philosophies will deteriorate. Your life is on the line. Therefore, take some time today while you still have it to prayerfully seek what our judge has to say through his word. We can learn his voice by doing this. And if we are humble, fervent in our prayers, and seek his face, no weapon made against us will flourish. He will take up residence within us, fight our battles, atone for our transgressions, protect us from the enemy's arrows, and answer our prayers. Our final destination will be heaven, and He can use us to aid those we come across in turning away from evil and escaping a hell with no doors, where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth from horror and pain. Your decision is yours. Turn your complete attention away from committing evil. It's understandable that so many individuals walk around feeling as though they simply don't measure up since this world continues placing bigger and higher expectations on them. An interview is required to enroll your child in a private school in order to ascertain whether they are well-mannered and come from a nice household and excel in the classroom. It doesn't become much simpler to land a job because you're up against competitors who might be sharper, more inventive, or have a more outstanding resume. Think again if you've convinced yourself that you have nothing to give God and are delaying serving Him until you are perfect. Instead of focusing on what you are not, He wants you to work for Him because of who you are. You might be surprised to learn that God does not evaluate your ability, but rather your heart. Man looks at the external appearance, but the Lord focuses on the heart. The Bible declares in 1 Samuel 16, verse 7, Job's standards set out by God differ from those of men. He doesn't only pick the people with the best looks, the best talent, or the highest exam scores. A devoted heart is necessary for God, and He can work wonders with it. In the end, God made this invisible world from invisible forces. Imagine what God can accomplish through you. Today, give Him your heart and your life and you can start your incredible journey in God's service. When you feel completely alone and believe that no one would care if you vanished off the face of the planet, Jesus cares. There may be times when you feel completely alone in the world and that no one actually loves you, but Jesus does. Gordon Jensen wrote a beautiful song that goes, Tears are a language God knows. 
He sees the tears of a broken-hearted soul. He sees your tears and hears them when they fall. God weeps along with man, and he takes him by the hand. Tears come to your eyes when you are feeling depressed by loss or when events do not go according to your plans. However, God won't overlook you. Tears are a language that God understands, and his promises are valid, no matter how alone you feel. Keep in mind that Jesus is always by your side and that help is only a prayer away. Despite the fact that you may feel unloved, God loves you so much that he gave his life so you could live forever with him in paradise. Although you may feel unworthy, Jesus makes you worthy. In order to wipe away each sorrow and fill your empty heart with his pleasure, God sees your tears and longs for you to run into his arms of love. God declared that your ideas shape your feelings and your feelings shape your actions long before psychology was a thing. Our minds are truly incredible works of art. To do simply the fundamental operations of your brain, a computer the size of the Pentagon would be required. More than 100 billion nerve cells make up your brain. 10,000 more neurons are attached to each individual cell. You talk to yourself all the time. It never stops. Right now, you're speaking to yourself. According to research, the average person speaks between 150 to 200 words per minute. But self-talk, or the mental discussion you have with yourself, happens at a rate closer to 1,300 words per minute. The issue is that many of us act like Job in all our inner dialogue. Everything I say seems to condemn me, Job claims in Job 9 verse 2. You are your own worst critic, if you're like most people, right? You constantly criticize yourself. You might smile when you enter a room, but secretly be whispering, I'm obese, not smart enough as me, I look bad, I'm also constantly late. This conversation is largely subconscious. God wants you to cease being critical of yourself. Who do you actually degrade when you criticize yourself? Actually, you're pointing to the one who created you. God, you blew it with me, you say when you say, God, I'm useless. I'm no good. I can't do anything. God says it is improper to criticize yourself because of this. How do you stop talking badly about yourself so that you can have greater confidence. It's known as the replacement principle, which states to fix your thoughts on what is true, good, and right. Consider all the things you have to feel joyful about and to thank God for. Philippians 4, 8. Concentrate on who you want to become and what God wants to accomplish in your life. I'm not aware of any better treatment for poor self-esteem than daily Bible reading. Study it. Commit it to memory, reflect on it, and use it in your daily life. There is no better way to boost your self-assurance than to read the Bible and begin to accept what God says about you. I want to follow God's will and act morally, but when temptations come my way from the devil, I end up doing exactly what I don't want to do. I feel guilty and disappointed afterwards because I rebelled against God again and again. In Mark 14, 38 of the Bible, it reads, Watch and pray so that you will not succumb to temptation. Although the flesh is weak, the spirit is willing. No matter what temptations Satan presents to you, it is crucial that you remain close to Jesus in order to avoid falling. As stated in Isaiah 40, 29, He gives vigor to the weary and enhances the power of the weak. God will give you the strength to oppose the adversary. The good news is that you can rely on God's assurance found in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, which states that no temptation has overtaken you except that which is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. 
There is no clearer statement than that. Making the proper decisions need the power of God's Holy Spirit. Simply by being willing is not enough. If you stick by Jesus, He will give you the power you need to withstand temptation and shine for Him. Your speech conveys a lot about your personality. If you use sarcasm, negativity, or annoyance in your interactions with people, it speaks volumes about who you are and not just your current state of mind. Even strangers are treated with kindness by certain individuals, but once they are in their own homes, things take a completely another turn. They treat their family disrespectfully, snap at their partner, yell at their kids, reprimand the dog, etc. No matter who you are speaking to, using sarcasm or demeaning language does not demonstrate a heart that has been given over to Jesus. When spoken, sharp words cannot be taken back, since they harm the soul. Choose to be cheerful, kind, and loving, rather than negative, and let your words show everyone around you that you are a follower of Jesus. Let your discourse always be kind and salty, the Bible advises in Colossians 4-6, so that you will be able to respond to everyone. The pleasant words you spoke today may slip your mind, but the people who heard them may never forget them. Kind words are like honey, delicious to the soul, and good for the body, according to Proverbs 16.24. Make the decision today to allow your discussions reflect God's love to everyone, not only to the people you wish to impress, as your words reveal not just who you are, but also who you belong to. The devil's instruments of discouragement, such as anger, Envy, hatred, unforgiveness, selfishness, and self-pity are known as the rubbish of sin. Weighing us down and filling our hearts with junk, it's ridiculous that we wish to hold on to it. Why we find it so difficult to let go of the very things that keep us from God defies all logic. It's very true what they say, trash in, garbage out. Resentment and fury will manifest itself in all our behaviors and deeds if we allow them to flood our hearts with those emotions. Psalm 51.10 Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a firm soul within me, is David's petition. When we let God cleanse our souls, there is a genuinely remarkable transformation that no words can adequately convey true joy beyond anything we have ever experienced. In this fast-paced world, the majority of people experience stress while striving to meet the demands. Their heads are racing a hundred miles per hour, and they have too much to do and too little time. There should be no surprise as to why so many people are depressed and on... There should be no surprise as to why so many people are depressed and on anti and on anti-anxiety medications while dozing while dozing off. There should be no surprise as to why so many people are depressed and on anti-anxiety medications while dozing off. But this is not how life must be. God wants you to experience life to the fullest. Take advantage of God's promise in Psalm 55, 22, that He will take care of you and never allow the righteous, that He will take care of you and never allow the righteous to perish. You can also use Isaiah 26, 3, which states, You will keep him whose mind is solid because he believes in you in perfect tranquility. What a kind and dependable God who provides for and watches over his children. Stop. Take a deep breath. And consider all the blessings in your life when you're at your wit's end and everyone is getting on your nerves. Recall the challenging moments in particular. When things were so hopeless that you couldn't possibly imagine surviving another day, but God saw you through. You have never been alone in your struggles since your closest friend, Jesus, has been at your side throughout the entire process. He won't let you down now, I promise. Ask God 
to help you plan your schedule so that you may only accept His requests and reject everything else that isn't on God's list. You'll quickly come to the conclusion that you're too privileged to be stressed. All too frequently, individuals cling to their sadness, pain, and rage as if doing so would make them feel better. They continuously recount all the occasions that someone wronged them to the first person who will stop long enough to listen. The unfortunate thing about this is that every time they bring it up, their hearts get angrier and more painful. You cannot possibly be joyful as long as you are dragging around an anchor of pain. And what's more, God won't forgive you unless you do. According to Matthew 6.15 of the Bible, But if you do not forgive other people their crimes, neither will your Father forgive your sins. The cost of holding on to suffering is fairly high. Missing out on eternity. Even individuals who believe they have forgiven occasionally fall into the poor me trap, bringing it up again. However, if you keep bringing up all the negative things that have happened to you, you will never be able to move on. It's similar to having surgery and repeatedly ripping out your sutures while being baffled as to why you cannot seem to recover. The key to happiness is to move on with Jesus and forgive, forget, and move on. That's how easy it is, truly. You should write down that prescription and post it somewhere visible until it finally sinks in. Jesus is the only healer of hearts. Therefore, give him all your resentment, bitterness, and hurt feelings right now. Remember that Satan has a unique plan for your life, just as God does. In fact, the verse, The thief does not come except to steal to murder and to destroy, from John 10.10 of the Bible, states as much. God gave you potent weapons of mass destruction to destroy the enemy because the devil's strategy is incredibly deadly. Hit Satan with the praise weapon as he attempts to discourage you. Singing God's praises and feeling discouraged at the same time is impossible. Respond with obedience when the devil tries to dis- respond with obedience when the devil tries to persuade you to disobey God's holy word. All you have to do is let God fight your battles for you and he will give you the victory. Faith is a strong weapon as well. The ability to fully trust God is a powerful defense against the devil's doubt-filled arrows. Put on all of Christ's armor and a great victory will be yours. And let's not overlook one of the most potent tools of all, prayer ammunition. If you have a direct line to your Heavenly Father, nothing can break through your shield of faith. No matter what the enemy throws at you, keep in mind that God will give you the strength to combat him. The truth that God adores you may surprise you. Yes, the same you that suffers, makes errors, and is full of imperfections, is loved by God exactly as you are. He's not waiting for you to be perfect before showing you His love, and He doesn't need you to seem like you've got it all together for His sake either. Don't put on a show. Just be yourself with God. In your own honest voice, communicate with Him deeply. He wants honest, genuine dialogue, friend to friend, not a polished, formal, fancy prayer. Being phony is the worst thing you can do, and God is just as able to see through it as the majority of humans. Your heart can be open when you are real with your Heavenly Father, which enables God to communicate to you and transform you as well. There are many religious imposters in the world who are ignorant of the true nature of God. The Bible states in Proverbs 12, 22, Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who act truly are His joy. That lying or distorting the truth is wrong. Make Jesus your best friend by being yourself and just being real with Him. The word gentleness is used to describe Jesus' character and is frequently used in the Bible. However, being gentle can sometimes be seen negatively in today's society, as if you're a sissy or even weak. 
but gentleness is a quality we ought to all work to cultivate. When someone is yelling at you, it takes a lot of willpower to respond gently. Actually, gentleness is strength that is released in a suitable, regulated way. It's crucial to exercise gentleness when expressing your faith. Nobody likes to pay attention to a pushy, arrogant know-it-all. Jesus was never a bully, and he never preached with a booming, domineering voice. He merely spoke the truth, leaving it up to others to decide whether or not to heed his advice. Philippians 4, 5 of the Bible states, Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is close by. You'll learn the power of gentleness when you resolve to behave more like Jesus and treat people with consideration, decency, kindness, and respect. If I had to choose one verse from the Bible to leave the world with, it would be 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, which states, If my people, which are called by my name, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and will heal their land. Some people believe that God simply came up with a set of laws to make everyone miserable, but the Ten Commandments were actually given by God because He loved you and wanted you to live a better life. Here's something you might not have considered, though. Did you know that obedience and prayer answered directly correlate with one another? According to 1 John 3.22 of the Bible, And everything we ask, He gives us, for we fulfill His commandments and do what pleases Him. Pay close attention to the phrase, because we keep His commandments, in that sentence. Furthermore, according to Psalm 84.11, He will not withhold good things from those who walk uprightly. God could not have been clearer about the prerequisite for receiving an answer to prayer, obedience. Ask yourself, am I obeying God? If God doesn't seem to answer your prayers, is there anything about me that violates His law? Do I only rely on prayer when I'm hoping to use God to obtain my goals? Be obedient before bringing your demands before God. The prayer David prayed in Psalm 51.10, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and establish a faithful soul within me, is a good place to start. Wouldn't it be amazing if everyone could be dependable? truthful, and decent. Imagine how wonderful it would be to conduct business without worrying that you are receiving a lousy deal. And wouldn't it be comforting to be able to confide in someone while knowing that you won't find out the next day on Facebook that your confidence was broken? How incredible would it be to be able to cross the street at any time of day or night without fear? However, the reality is that as long as we continue to inhabit this wicked planet— Neither equality, nor total honesty, nor safety will exist. Until the second coming of Jesus, the world would continue to be unfair. However, there is hope when traveling through life because of someone you can trust completely. That person is your best friend, Jesus. He will never disappoint you, lie to you, or cause you harm in any manner. The good news is that He loves you so much that He will soon bring you home to paradise where you will spend all of eternity with Him. The things of this world will soon pass away and you won't ever again experience sadness, discouragement, anger, or loneliness. Each day will be more magnificent than the one before, making you more joyful than you could have ever imagined. People frequently live in the now and party their lives away without giving the future any attention They are so preoccupied with self that they lose sight of what other people desire and need. But in addition to being a pointless and isolating existence, this is also a precarious slippery slope. Before you know it, you start to resemble the prodigal son from the Bible who plummeted to his lowest point before realizing his need for a Savior. When you have nothing left, you realize that God is sufficient. The only way to experience true, enduring joy is is to live for Christ. Stop putting yourself first and start putting Jesus first. God just wants you to have a joy-filled life, and that is 
the only way to do it. Therefore, it's not too late to devote your heart to God because He loves you more than anyone else could and is waiting to embrace you with open arms, regardless of how selfishly you have lived in the past, what mistakes you've made, or how long it has been since you attended church. That dirty look you gave the person who took their time getting off the elevator might not have happened if you knew that just moments before they learned their only child was killed and they were paralyzed with grief. If you could see inside other people's hearts, how you treat them would be completely different. And if you were aware that the irritable salesperson was a single mother who worked three jobs, you might have had more patience with her. It's simple to criticize others based on what you observe, but what God sees is much more precise and provides the true picture of what's happening. In order to overcome this, it's critical to forgive easily, share a smile, and promote love. It's crucial to share a smile, show affection, and forgive without delay. Don't take it personally when someone is rude to you, unless you know you did something to deserve it. Avoid becoming easily upset and refrain from thinking ill of people. Most likely, it had more to do with what that individual was going through than with you. Always show the same kindness and grace that God has shown you. In the end, God's mercy is when He doesn't give you what you deserve. And His grace is when He gives you what you don't deserve. In other words, rejoice because He loves you enough to overlook your unworthiness, even though no one deserves His generosity or mercy. You simply can't avoid changing when you fall in love with Jesus because He transforms you. Your new life as a Christian now determines who you are because the old you is no longer there. But it is impossible to live a lively life in Christ one second and dance with the devil the next. You can only serve one master. Thus, you must choose a side and a master to serve. You will suffer greatly if you decide to dabble in sin. You cannot live a life of chastity and devotion to your Lord and Savior while lying, cheating, spreading rumors, or committing any other sin. Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. The Bible states in Joshua 24, 15, However, as for my family and I, we will worship the Lord. Make God the priority in your life to experience the true joy of living because Jesus is the joy of living, and it is impossible to be happy while serving the devil. Make the decision to follow Jesus and refuse to dance with the devil. Why is it that some sins, despite your best efforts, you tend to repeat again and time again? Even after sincerely apologizing to the Lord and begging for forgiveness, you still succumb to temptation when it presents itself again. You then approach God's throne room in frustration and despair, perhaps even feeling a little ashamed to beg for forgiveness once more. Read what the Apostle Paul says in Romans 7, 15 through 25, if you feel that you are the only one who has ever experienced this aggravation. Because I don't understand what I've done, because I do the very thing I despise rather than what I want to accomplish, the key to continuing to live a life of holiness is to stay close to Christ at all times. You will stumble the moment your eyes are not fixed on Jesus. The key to continuing to live a life of holiness is to stay close to Christ at all times. You will stumble the moment your eyes are not fixed on Jesus. According to 1 John chapter 3, verses 6-10 through 10 of the Bible, No one who abides in him continues in sin. Whoever makes a practice of sin is of the devil. No one who is born of God practices sin. Whoever does not uphold righteousness is not of God, and thus makes it clear who is a child of God and who is a kid of the devil. Keep your relationship with Jesus strong if you want to break the cycle of sinful behavior. When you find yourself thinking negatively, use that as an opportunity to speak blessings and good changes over the problem, scenario, or circumstance. We weren't made to be anxious, afraid, or stressed out over anything. 
If you tried to tally all the blessings our Father in Heaven gives us every day, he would run out of space. Just keep in mind that you are where you are in life right now for a reason. You have a responsibility to the people and the world around you. Do not let anything bad distract you from the goals and plans that God intended for you when He was growing you within your mother. Choose life, select wholesome goals, intentions, expressions, and deeds. Everyone in our life, especially our families, is greatly impacted by the way we live each day. Given that we spend the majority of our time with them, it seems reasonable. It must begin at home if we wish to shine for Jesus. Christ's presence in us is evident in our attitudes, choices, and responses to ordinary events. Sometimes we try to be nice to strangers, but when we go home, we behave totally different with the people we care about the most. But leading a life that is based on Christ doesn't entail acting like a Christian all day long before hanging up your Christian cap and changing into someone else when you get home. God wants you to be a constant light for Him, especially at home. Ask Jesus to give you the courage to respond in love when disputes and tempers flare up. Family bonds and affection are at their strongest when Christ is at the center of the household. And all that you do online, offline, alone, or around others, remember to put all your faith in the Lord and don't rely on your own knowledge. Recognize Him in all of your actions and He will guide your steps. Do not follow your own wisdom, rather, Fear the Lord and stay away from wickedness. God appreciates hard labor, but He doesn't base His approval on your income or position's prestige. He appreciates your integrity, patience, and reliability instead. God looks inward because a joyful heart brings about contentment and tranquility in all facets of life, even work. Not that I talk in terms of need, because I have learned to be content in whatever position I am. The Bible states in Philippians 4, 11, Even while labor is necessary to earn money for everyday expenses, God never intended for it to be a chore. Whatever the task, there is delight when you let Jesus live in your heart. Do everything for the glory of God, regardless of the deadlines, home tasks, exams, or never-ending to-do lists. With a song in your heart, your day will go far more smoothly, regardless of your demanding employer, obnoxious co-workers, or disagreeable task. Take time for spiritual nourishment and pray, asking God to fill you up to the brim with His delight, rather than dreading getting out of bed in the morning to go to work. Then heed God's counsel from Ecclesiastes 9.10. Whatever your hand findeth to accomplish, do it with all your might. For there is no labor, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom in the grave where you are going. The unwillingness to put others before oneself is something that is badly lacking in today's environment. In our increasingly self-centered society, it doesn't seem to matter if we stepped on someone else in order to acquire what we want. However, God is extremely clear about His position on selfishness. For where you have envy and self-centered desire, there you will find chaos and even bad behavior, the Bible states in James 3, verse 16. Additionally, Philippians 2, 3 instructs us to refrain from acting out of conceit or selfish ambition. Instead, humble yourself and put others before yourself. Selfishness never leads to happiness. Jesus and growing closer to Him are the sources of true joy. When Christ was on earth, He constantly had others in mind and made an effort to be considerate and helpful. He spent many hours helping the ill, encouraging people, and performing deeds of kindness without ever grumbling. He also endured hunger, lack of sleep, and continual crowd shoving. He wasn't considering Himself as He was being battered, bruised, bleeding and dying on a cross. He instead gave thought to every one of us so that we could spend eternity with Him as well as His mother, friends, and the thief who was hanging next to Him. So abandon the me-first mentality and adopt a Christ-first mentality and work 
to resemble Him more. Some people find it difficult to acknowledge when they are incorrect or have made a mistake. Instead of accepting responsibility for the mistake, they quickly enter defensive mode and attempt to defend their behavior. Making explanations for your own mistakes, however, neither changes what you did nor improves your reputation. Most of the time, others can see straight through your attempts to act innocent, so you have really only succeeded in fooling yourself. More importantly, God is unfoolable. Although it's a human instinct, self-preservation might be deceiving. It's simpler to recognize others' flaws than it is to recognize your own sin. But simply examine your own life honestly by looking in the mirror. You won't need to criticize other people's actions since you'll have a full-time job keeping yourself on the correct path. Why do you see the speck in your brother's eye but not the plank in your own eye, the Bible asks in Luke 6, 41 and 42? Or how can you ask your brother to let you take out the speck from their eye when you yourself are blind to the plank in your own eye? Hypocrite! Before you can see well to take the speck from your brother's eye, you must first remove the plank from your own eye. Everyone is a sinner and nobody is flawless. So instead of concentrating on other people's issues, work on your own. Don't forget to ask God for an extra measure of love for your fellow man. Ask Him to help you recognize the sin in your own life more than you notice the faults of others. Ask yourself, when was the last time I prayed? If you feel as though there aren't enough hours in the day, expectations are too high, it's impossible to get everything done you need to get done, and your life is spinning out of control. When did I last read through my Bible? And when did I last fully feel God's presence? It's very likely that you have ignored your quiet time with God if you are stressed out and your anxiety levels have reached their peak. You became overwhelmed by life's stresses and the expectations of others, and as a result, Jesus lost his rightful place as first in your life and was pushed to the side. Every time you ignore God, bad things start to happen in your life. Because Jesus is life's joy, you can't possibly be joyful. But far too frequently, when you're exhausted and stressed out, you reach for your phone to check Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, which only makes you feel worse. Turn to God's Word rather than social media. Read His encouraging words of love and stop running on empty. The Holy Spirit will communicate to your heart as you do so. The best way to relieve stress is to get on your knees and seek God for more of His peace. Success is one of the most desired outcomes in life, but everyone's definition of what success actually entails is unique. Some claim that it is motivated by power, money, or fame. Others believe they have succeeded if they live the life of their dreams, including a wonderful spouse, ideal children, a lovely home, and luxurious trips. However, God has a very different definition of success since He based it on the quality of your relationship with Him. Are you obedient in achieving His aims and purposes? Are your tithes and offerings consistent? Do you value the time you spend with Him alone? Do you show others kindness, love, and compassion? There are numerous biblical figures who are viewed as failures by their colleagues and acquaintances, but who, in God's estimation, were extraordinarily successful. For instance, Jeremiah was impoverished, homeless, imprisoned, and despite being God's messenger for 40 years, no one paid attention to what he had to say. Although the world saw him as a total failure, God saw him as a big success because he was obedient to everything that God required of him. Strive to succeed in God's sight, and you'll not only have a more fulfilling and joyful existence now, but also for all of eternity. It can be tempting to believe that you are the only one going through hardship during your lowest points when everything seems to be going wrong? It might even seem as though God loves other people more since they appear to have the ideal lives. 
However, know this, God does not play favorites. No matter how long you stay at your sad party and wish to think bad things only happen to you. Even if you were the only sinner on earth, he still would have given his life to save you because he loves all his children equally. There is no greater love than the one he has for you. That's how much you mean to him. God does not love his children differently because we have all received different gifts. God has a distinct plan for each of his children because he formed them all so different from one another. No matter what part you play, what matters is that you are carrying out his plan. God's will for you can only be known through prayer, faith, and surrender. God can utilize you fully and entirely for his honor and glory once you have fully submitted your will to his will. But surrender is where it all begins. The purest kind of happiness and fulfillment can only be attained when your heart is willing to be everything or nothing. I understand what it is to be in need and what it means to have plenty. The Bible says in Philippians 4 verses 12 through 14, I have discovered the key to finding contentment in every circumstance, whether I am well fed or hungry, or whether I am in abundance or want. He provides me with the strength so I can accomplish all of this, putting God in command of your life and knowing for certain that all of his children are his favorites is such a fantastic way to live. You can choose to let God shine through you in any circumstance, or you can choose to have a negative outlook when things don't go your way. Nobody has the authority to make you furious, mad, or even sarcastic. Only you have control over your emotions. However, if you cede control to the actions of another person or a bad circumstance, you are no longer in charge, and that is a risky position to be in. God's approach is not to wallow in self-pity and bitterness, to hold bad thoughts, to whine and criticize. You should have the same mentality as Christ Jesus, the Bible says in Philippians 2, 5. I am not saying this because I am in need, because I have learned to be content no matter the circumstances, Philippians 4, 11 says. Avoid dwelling on life's unpleasant experiences by adopting a Christ-like attitude. Being joyful and content all the time is not humanly feasible, but with God, anything is possible. You are given the power to live each day as He did by the person of Christ Jesus. Spend time in prayer each morning before you leave the house, asking God to give you the strength to be like Him. Then, Choose to adopt a Christ-like outlook and remember to declare Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. No matter how depressed and disappointed you are after losing a loved one, stay on to Jesus and keep holding on instead of giving up on life. He'll mend your shattered heart and give you the courage you need to face each day. Losing a loved one is hard, and the more you love, the more painful it is. Only someone who has lost someone they deeply loved can truly understand the old adage, it is better to have loved and lost than to never have loved at all. Because when you love someone that much, you wouldn't trade the time you had with them for anything. To feel that connection with them again, even for a brief while, would be worth going through the anguish once more. You may say that the cost of love is quite high. Finding your new normal and adjusting to loss both require time. There is no such thing as getting over it when you lose a loved one. You don't forget, but you may learn to accept the loss, deal with the grief, live with the memories, and rediscover the joy of living with God's assistance. Hold on fast to God's hand and keep holding on because He doesn't want you to face loss alone. He wants you to rely on Him for love, support, and strength. Simply put, 
It's untrue to say that sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. Words have great power. They have the ability to sever like knives and leave behind hurtful wounds that can cause a lifetime of self-doubt, low self-esteem, and self-hatred. Your words have the power to either assist or hurt other people. The unfortunate thing about harsh words is that once spoken, they are unrecoverable. The harm has been done. It is crucial to choose your words carefully, communicate kindly, and always think about how others may react to what you say. A good remark has the power to cheer someone up, mend a broken heart, and provide joy to their life. Proverbs 15.23 states, One takes satisfaction in making an appropriate reply, and how excellent is a timely speech. The Bible, which is God's holy word, contains the most potent words. God provides us with the guidance, courage, strength, and knowledge we need to talk in a way that we represent Him if we sincerely listen to what He is saying. As long as Jesus is shining through, you never have to worry about saying the incorrect thing. Do you want to spend time alone with your Creator? Or do you find that your hectic schedule prevents you from doing so when the going gets tough? You cannot afford to not devote time for Jesus if you want a fulfilling life with Him. Implementing the three D's will transform your life. 1. Devotions Decide to start each day with personal devotions, including worship and adoration of your Lord and Savior. 2. Make a decision. Decide in your spirit that spending time with God is the most important thing you can do. 3. Discipline. Discipline yourself to remain steadfast and diligent, allowing nothing to obscure or divert you from your private time with your Heavenly Father. Soon enough, you'll know the true joy of having Jesus as your greatest friend and spending time with Him will be an exhilarating delight that will satisfy your soul beyond anything you could have possibly dreamed. For He satisfies the yearning spirit and fills the hungry soul with goodness. The Bible says in Psalm 107, 9, The more time you spend with God, the more you'll want to spend more time with Him. And before you know it, the ten minutes you set aside won't be enough. You'll be astonished at how much better your day will be after spending time with Jesus. And what's best of all is how much better you've grown as a person the more time you spend with Jesus, the closer you get to Him. A decision must be made to spend time with God, both now and every day. Parents who want to instill a love for Jesus in their kids take them to church, read them morality-enhancing books, limit their viewing of violent television shows, teach them to pray, and do all the other typical things parents do to teach their kids about God. However, leading by example is the most efficient approach to teach kids about who God really is. Even if you read them the entire Bible, people won't fully believe unless they recognize Jesus in you. Are you turning to Jesus for aid when a crisis arises, fully trusting that He has everything under control, or are your children seeing you sobbing, worrying, complaining, and angry? Do you quickly give Jesus praise when something amazing occurs? Children see what adults do, and seeing faith and action in your life demonstrates to them that God is a real being who was there in both the good and the bad times. It teaches children that the only way to deal with life's difficulties is to have a relationship with God, and that no matter what, He is always there for them. In everything, offer them an example by acting morally, the Bible states in Titus 2, 7. In your instruction, exhibit honesty and seriousness. Let no one look down on your youth, but rather set an example for the believers in speech conduct, love, faith, and purity, according to 1 Timothy 4.12. 
give your kids a glimpse of what a genuine relationship with God is like by letting them see you give thanks to God for the good times and turning to Him first when hardship arises. There are moments when you have a hard time resisting the urge to do something you know is wrong. You've stumbled so frequently that it appears that you're having luck with the devil. It might even be a transgression that, to the world, is no big deal, and you find solace in the fact that no one else could possibly know. However, if you are living a Christian life, your conscience won't let you sleep. When you continue to disregard God's voice, the adversary triumphs even though the Holy Spirit is pleading with you to confess your hidden sin. Discouragement creeps in as you continue on the wrong path and spiral downward in your relationship with Jesus. You are tempted to give up and stop making an effort to fight the temptation. Since some folks don't comprehend God's holy word and what he is attempting to express to them, some people occasionally become discouraged. They become frustrated because they are unable to comprehend God's instructions or His plan for their lives. But if you want to comprehend, you need to be near Jesus because His teachings make sense when your heart is in the proper place. You see, God is not withholding His lessons from you. Rather, He is patiently waiting for you to reach the appropriate level of spirituality so that you will comprehend I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot endure them now, the Bible states in John 16, 12. Before you are able to understand his truth, you must become one with Christ by his Holy Spirit. Every area of your life changes when Jesus is your best friend. There is no correlation between what some individuals say and how they truly live. They just prefer to boast about their mountaintop experience. Because when your heart is right with God, you can see it in your daily acts that Christ truly does reside inside of you. To put it another way, your every move and behavior will demonstrate it because you will radiate with His love. When all hope appears lost, turn to the text found in John 16, 13, Mark 4, verses 11 and 12, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9, and 1 Corinthians 2 verses 1 through 16. Jesus is your hope. Have you ever wondered what the phrase pray without ceasing in 1 Thessalonians 5.17 means in the Bible? Does that imply that we must always pray while on our knees? Obviously not. The Bible doesn't describe a formula or obvious act of prayer. Rather, it describes a way of life, an attitude of prayer, where we feel at ease speaking to God, whenever and wherever. It involves having a constant awareness of God and letting Him direct our thoughts, deeds, and actions. To put it another way, we should be so close to Jesus that we seek His advice on everything and recognize Him as our best friend, someone we want to spend the rest of our lives with. Our lives are changed when we maintain a constant attitude of prayer because God's presence permeates every aspect of our day. When something wonderful occurs, we immediately give Him credit. When evil is there, we cry out to God. And when we are tempted, Jesus is the first one we turn to for the ability to withstand the temptation. We can spend our lives with a constant ascending prayer where we consult God in every situation by praying without ceasing. We miss out on the real delight of communion with God when we rush through prayer and only beg for assistance when we are in dire straits. It is wrong to spread false statements about someone. There will be no sugarcoating or glossing over the truth in heaven. God's instruction in Leviticus 9.15 is unequivocal. You shall not go about among your people as a slanderer, and you are not to act against the life of your neighbor. I am the Lord. Since the time of the Bible, spreading rumors, false information, or unverified truths has been a tactic employed to eliminate opponents. When someone annoys them, the first thing individuals do is try to destroy their reputation in front of everybody who will listen. And the speed at which lies are circulated on social media is astounding. 
while getting even by spreading rumors may offer you a brief rush of morbid pleasure. It rapidly fades and is replaced with remorse and bitterness. The awful sensation of being cut apart from God through sin. Simply put, damaging other people's reputations will sever your personal bond with your Heavenly Father. Furthermore, nothing is worth that. Your words have the power to either build someone up or tear them down. Anytime you disparage someone, spread salacious rumors about them, or attempt to influence someone else's thinking by introducing misleading information or exaggerated claims, you are committing a sin. And it is sinful to spread rumors, whether you are doing it or just listening. Proverbs 20, 19 in the Bible advises against even interacting with gossipers. Additionally, Exodus 23, 1 commands us not to carry a false report or join hands with an evil man to be a malicious witness. Make it a point to always talk well of other people, and when someone starts to spill some juicy rumors, just walk away. Prayer Set a guard, O Lord, over my tongue. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Psalm 141, 3 Nothing is more depressing than seeing into someone's hopeless eyes. Without hope, there simply isn't any motivation to get out of bed in the morning, carry out your daily activities, or even try to function. People without hope merely live by the numbers and are constantly unhappy. But thank God, Jesus is your hope. Therefore, there is no need for anyone to live without it. Hope reigns eternally as a result of Christ's atoning death at Calvary. Jesus is the solution. Therefore, there is no need to live in gloom and despair while carrying a defeated expression on your face. When I surrender my life to Him, I can be certain that God has a wonderful future in store for me, one that includes spending all of eternity with Him in heaven. There is simply no greater gift than that. Isaiah 40, 31 in the Bible declares that those who hope in the Lord shall replenish their strength. They will fly like eagles, run without getting tired, and stroll without feeling dizzy. In Jeremiah 29, 11, God promises, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. You can take advantage of this promise. What a great, forgiving, and loving God we serve. If you ever feel hopeless and disheartened, remember that Jesus is your hope. It's critical to keep in mind that God knows what is best for you and that you must trust Him to grant your requests in accordance with His will, not your own, while presenting them before His throne room. However, Christians far too frequently come to God with a to-do list and, even worse, tell Him how to answer their prayers. It doesn't take long when spiritual stubbornness overcomes your confidence in God for you to become annoyed and accuse Him of not doing what you want. But unless you let God into your life and give Him complete authority, you will never truly feel joy and contentment. You must let go of your wants and expectations and trust God to choose what is best for you, no matter how much you want God to perform a miracle on your behalf. When you ask, you do not receive, the Bible says in James 4.3, because you ask with wrong motives, so that you may spend what you receive on your pleasures. This does not imply that God does not love you or has abandoned you when you do not get the job you wanted, feel devastated because you were childless, or do not get the diagnosis you were hoping for. God always answers prayer. So even if He has good reason for doing what He does, He is not ignoring you. It's possible that you will not be healed until you enter paradise and receive a new body. But as long as you are living according to Jesus and His plan for your life, everything will be okay. God has you covered. Therefore, there's no need for you to worry. Instead of blaming Him for not providing what you desire, 
ask for more faith to put your trust in Him. He still performs miracles today and has the potential to transform your life, preparing you for eternity. Yes, everything is good. The devil wants you to think that you can indulge in all of the world's sinful pleasures without suffering the repercussions, but nothing could be further from the truth. You cannot have one foot in the kingdom of God and the other in the dominion of the devil. You cannot straddle the fence. You must pick a side. In 1 John 2.15 of the Bible, it is said, Do not love the world or anything in the world. Anyone who loves the world does not possess the love of the Father. When you love the world, you care more about what other people think of you, about your wealth, social standing, level of travel, or position in the workforce. However, if you fall in love with Jesus, you start to care more about what He thinks of you and focus on getting to paradise. You would sooner die than displease your Lord and Savior because you are driven to serve God and to spread His love to others. In Romans 8, 13, God warns us, For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. And in Haggai 1, 5, This is what the Lord Almighty says, Give careful thought to your ways. He offers each of us life-saving guidance. God gives wisdom through His Holy Word so that you will have all the knowledge necessary to make the proper choices during this challenging life journey. Your life will depend on your decision. Therefore, make the decision today to quit walking a fine line and to choose God's kingdom. All of those actions were exemplified by the Good Samaritan, Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 37, who reached out to help the hurt man. But he also displayed the fourth and most important stage in displaying mercy. You must invest whatever it costs. Kindness and selflessness always come at a price. Usually, being merciful requires giving up time, effort, money, or even your reputation. For instance, the Good Samaritan brought the hurt man to a motel. He must have traveled a long way because... He mounted the man on his donkey. He looked after him all night long, catered for his necessities, and even paid the bill, all on his own dime. He didn't simply call the police. He helped as much as he could. And what was his motivation for serving? Nothing. He merely acted out of love. And God expects us to serve and minister in that way. Mercy will come with a price. You'll lose time, money, or perhaps even relationships. Mercy that is inexpensive is not very valuable. But God says that if you give all you have to help those in need, He will reward you in return. Feed the hungry and assist those who are in need, the Bible instructs. When that happens, your light will drive away the shadows. The Lord will lead you constantly, replenishing your strength and providing you with water when you are parched. Living water. You will resemble a well-kept garden and an ongoing spring. Isaiah 58, 10, and 11. In other words, it will be worthwhile no matter what it costs you to show mercy. Upon that, you may rely. Around you, as bright as noon. The same mission that Jesus has been given to both you and me. One of the most important acts of mercy we can perform is this one. God reconciled us to himself via Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, according to the Bible, 2 Corinthians 5.18. It is just your responsibility to spread the message of God's unconditional love to others. But God does not anticipate that you will complete your mission by yourself. He provides you with other Christians who will help you. In actuality, evangelism is something your small group may undertake. In Luke 5, 17-26, God gives us a fantastic illustration of this. It is the tale of a group of friends who led a person to Christ. 
Since they were unable to enter the home where Jesus was, they dropped their paraplegic friend through a hole in the roof and placed him in the center of the crowd in front of Jesus. Jesus was moved by their faith and commanded the man to stand up and walk, which he did right away. The crowd was in awe. God teaches us five guidelines for how to reach out to others and carry out your group's God-given mission in the world in this wonderful story, The Compassionate Compass. This little group felt responsible enough to alleviate a friend's suffering. Mercy is not merely an emotion. In action, it is love. The cooperative principle. God has given each of us a role to play in evangelization. I sowed the seed. Apollos watered it, according to Paul. 1 Corinthians 3, 6. In other words, you only need to contribute in some ways. You don't have to be everything yourself. And God will bless you as a result. The Fundamental Belief Jesus claims that the paraplegic's friend's faith caused him to be healed. God's love is able to reach everyone. The impossible is something that God excels at. Keep your faith in the individuals you care about. Believe in what God can accomplish in their lives. The Action Principle The companions made a plan and carried it out. The paralyzed man couldn't come to Jesus on his own. He needed other people to bring him there. The principle of persistence prevented the pals from giving up when they were unable to enter the door due to the crowd. They demonstrated tenacity. Whatever it takes, we're going to bring our friend to Jesus, they declared. Are you prepared to do anything for a friend? Jesus needs to be known by everyone. Without Jesus, there is no hope for the afterlife. Since the Bible asserts that God is love, the converse must also be true. Love must be God. As a result, when you love those around you, you are truly demonstrating to them the character of God. Do you relish the chance to be loving to those around you? It must be simple to love your family and friends, right? You want to do all you can to improve their lives because you care about them. Do you find joy in loving people who are not your closest friends or family members? Are you prepared to step outside your comfort zone in order to love others? What a blessing it is to be God's hands to someone, to speak His gentle words to them, and to love them while they are in desperate need. Embrace the honor of loving others. When assisting someone in need seems inconvenient, pause and consider how God brought you consolation when you were suffering. Remember how patient God has been with you whenever you are thinking about those people who are testing your patience? And when you want to exact revenge on someone who has treated you unfairly or cruelly, stop and consider how kind God was to you even when you were his adversary. See Romans 5, 10. God is the origin of all things good. God created both what is visible to the naked eye and what is invisible to the unaided eye. Everything nice comes from him. There are four realities you must keep in mind while you rely on God for everything. Everything is a gift from God to start. You didn't earn what you have. All of it is an act of favor from God. You wouldn't have it if God didn't want to give it to you. According to James 1.17 of the Bible, every good and perfect gift is from above. Because of this, the third verse of the Lord's Prayer begins with the word gift. Give us our daily bread today. Why? Given that it is a gift, you cannot acquire it. Therefore, is nothing that you require that God cannot supply? You are unsure about your needs for the remainder of this year, but God is able to provide it, whatever it may be. According to Philippians 4.19 of the Bible, my God will fulfill all your needs in accordance with the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. Glory resources are lavish in the way that only God can be lavish. God's resources are limitless. God desires to provide for all your needs. 
If you know how to offer nice presents to your children, imagine how much more your Heavenly Father would do the same for those who ask Him for them, according to Matthew 7.11. God desires to supply your needs. Waiting for you is He. It is not God's fault if needs in your life are not being satisfied. You don't need to wait for God. He is anxious to see you. The issue isn't that God doesn't want to provide for your needs. It's that you never ask Him to. You don't have because you don't ask God, according to James 4, 2. God has established the family and the church as the two main places where people might seek refuge from the dangers of sin and the afflictions of the enemy. The option is presented to us. It is not ambiguous or covert. It is entirely up to us whether we choose to dwell under the protection of God's shade or in the exposed field where Satan has full reign. Serving God and being a committed pair to each other will have a lasting, positive impact on everyone you come in contact with. God is precise, planned, deliberate, and holy. He makes pledges to His offspring. His favors are countless and plentiful. God is eagerly awaiting our continued steadfastness on His rock-solid foundation so that He might lavishly bless us. That makes it worthwhile to go through training and get ready to live like a royal family. The best interests of every one of us are considered in God's plans for us. His path leads to a life that is abundant. But He did not make us into lifeless automatons that go through the motions of living a good life. No, we have the freedom to choose whether or not to obey the Lord. Our human nature has a propensity to take a self-centered route that disobeys God's rule. However, we miss His best for us in doing so. Develop the ability to extend your faith. Declare and believe something that has been declared in God's Word. Declare your ownership of it. Become a participant that is active. To replenish your strength, you must seek out your blessings. Do you require recovery? Think about the restoring verses and the atoning act that Christ already accomplished for you. Visualize it clearly in your head as being completed. Teach your mind and emotions to truly comprehend what Psalm 91 says about you. Give it time to implant itself in you. You will experience healing, provision, and protection as you heed this guidance. And the thing you've been praying to God for will come to pass. Is there a promise in God's Word that you'd love to have but aren't currently enjoying? Give it your all. Follow the law of the book. Attack it. Declare it. Own it. And hold it true. Follow God's guidance and lead a regal life. We have to make the same kinds of decisions every day. Both significant and little temptations seduce us, despite the differences in the specifics. By following His example and paying attention to His voice, we can live in accordance with Christ's will. Or we might decline. Choose to live today in a way that brings you life's fullness. The way of God. While educational institutions spend a lot of money on certificates, God freely offers wisdom to anyone who asks. For additional information on seeking God's wisdom, see James 1.5. We may question whether God still has any influence over world events when we witness bad leaders live lengthy lives and good leaders pass away early. Daniel witnessed bad monarchs with seemingly endless power, but he understood and said that God removes kings and sets up other kings, and that he is in complete control of all events. God rules the world in accordance with his intentions. Even though you may be shocked by how well bad individuals are doing, God is in charge. No matter what happens, let this knowledge inspire you with confidence and peace. In most circumstances, God giving us everything we think we desire would not make us very happy. Too frequently, the things we had to have are not even beneficial for us, and if we could see the whole picture, we would not want it anyhow. The concepts of wanting what we have versus having it 
are extremely different. It's better to evaluate what we have in life rather than constantly seeking more and to take the time to recognize God's blessings. When we are not constantly striving for something greater and better than what we have, there is a lovely sense of freedom. Take some time to smell the roses and be grateful for the wonderful blessings that God has already bestowed upon us. In Philippians 4.11 of the Bible, it says, I have learned to be content with whatever I have. We may all benefit much from learning to be satisfied since only then can we fully love and appreciate all that God has given us. Everything that is tangible and visible is governed by or derives from the invisible and spiritual. You must address the spiritual and invisible issues behind the physical and visible challenges you are currently facing in your life. Why? Because if you don't deal with the spiritual and invisible, you won't have dealt with the divine foundation from which to resolve the currently visible revealed problems. Before you can truly and permanently affect anything on the terrestrial level, you must first address what you can physically see, hear, touch, taste, and smell. Satan is trying to convince you to miss the heavenly perspective because he knows that until you approach your problems from the divine world, you will never be able to resolve them. Earth is ruled by heaven. What occurs up there affects what occurs below. Therefore, in order to get the solutions you wish for earth, you must maintain communication with heaven in order to actualize success in the obstacles you confront. Alternatively, remain rooted in Christ Jesus. Learn of Him through prayer. Study and apply God's Word to live the abundant life. John 10.10 The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly.